So here's some stuff that I'm going to be working with today. This is some freebie sub box my son got from his job. Go figure. So that's on a budget right there for sure. This one here is an amplifier. I had a whole bunch in my warehouse. These were on clearance. And this is an Orion Cobalt series, which is an entry level because this is an entry level video for the guy who just doesn't have a small fortune to spend on a car audio system. This I paid like 40, 50 bucks, something like that. So that's what he's going to get. At two ohms, it's going to make 300 watts, which should be pretty great for this because his, his car can use some, some bass because it has literally none. As far as the wiring goes, this is all just leftover stuff that I had lying around the warehouse. Nothing special for this car. However, the wire that I'm using is some Kicker 8 gauge, which is some good quality, solid copper, stranded wire, which you can see this is going to be really good. The wire is important. That's going to be my re remote turn on wire right here, my 8 gauge ground. This here is just a basic $10 line level converter, which is going to convert the speaker level wires in his rear speakers to an RCA output. I have a couple RCA cables in here. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use, but... Most likely it'll be this El Cipo one I got right here. And that'll go from here to here to feed audio into the amp. Here's this fuse. It's going to be a 40 amp. And that's pretty much it. So I want to show you how to put power flow cap, kit in there, the fuse block, the line level converter, put that in the trunk and tune and adjust the subwoofer. And hopefully see if this thing sounds good when we're done doing all this work. Okay, so I got my helper up front doing the power cable for the battery, which I'll show you in a sec. In the meantime, back here, if you just pull up this and pull back this panel, in here you'll find the harness is going in through the door boot into the, the speakers where we need to tap the audio signal from. And you'll see that in here is a twisted set of leads. So in the right rear on this one, we got brown and white. That's going to be our wires going to tap for audio signal on the right side. And then this is what the left side looks like. I'm going to grab those left wires right now. Okay, so I got the back seat out, which is right over there. If you don't know how to take out a back seat, you just basically grab it right here, pull it up, straight out. It just held in there with pop clips. The left speaker wires, and this and were right there. Black and white. The other side there was brown and white. So I'm going to run that passenger side down to the driver's side. Straight down, I'm gonna run it all together over here for my power, my, my remote turn on lead, and my two speaker levels into the trunk area. So you can see I got that passenger side buttoned up and I got the speakers wires connected. So I ran them through underneath the panel. And you can see how they run, they come out right there. And they're running across underneath the seat. Right here, I'm gonna let that just, let that chill because I'm gonna join that to the left side speaker wires, run down, connect that. I'm going to run my remote power and two speaker level wires under the seat and into the trunk area so we can start wiring the amplifier. So here's the wire completely connected now into the driver boot. See it's all taped up. The harness is back the way it was and I'm running down. I'm following the factory harness. Slapping onto the harness every six or seven inches across down. So I'm going to match up these two speaker wires here like I showed you before. Let me show you how this power cable run through the vehicle. So it's up behind that hood switch there around this. It's hard to show you. Gosh, it's really hard. So there you go. Boop. It's going up over and you can see a hole that I added for the LED lights in this vehicle, but that left there's already a factory grommet. So I just punched a hole through there and I went right through there for my power cable. And down. Running down through here, you want to leave it loose and you want to go on the inside, this side. Same thing all through here, always behind all the factory loom, all the factory harnesses. Into the back, I'm going to join the speaker cables, grab my ground and run it all into the trunk so I can mount the amp up. All my wires are now run. So I got my power, that's that big blue one right here. That's my left and right speaker levels. There's my remote turn on that I just connected at the fuse panel which was right up in here. And that was on the pink wire on the harness that goes up and down vertically right here to the side of that big white plug there. That's on keyed accessories. So that way when the vehicle is on, you'll have the audio, even if the ignition is not on, which is pretty much the way you want to have your system operate. So I'm going to join up all these cables and run them through the trunk to the back and we'll start wiring up the line level converter 
mounting the amp and tuning it up, getting this thing rolling. Okay, all the cables are underneath the seat and ready to roll. So I got my turn on here, my left and right audio, which is going to my line level converter. There's my ground right there. And my power wire is hiding in there someplace. Oh, there where she is. Put that down. And here's everything. I already connected my left and right speaker wires into the audio input, my line level converter. So I just run the RCS from here into the amp, wire it all up. So I got all the wires ran out into the trunk. On this side here, I have my audio from the RCA line level converter running into the left side for the audio in. On the right side, I'm using my left positive, right negative from that bridged output. And I have the two woofers over there wired in parallel, the two four ohm woofer single voice coils. So that gives me a two ohm load, which will make this 300 watt amp run at peak efficiency. So we should get hopefully something out of this thing, get some good bump in action. And over here I have my 12 volts, my trigger for my accessory and my ground. That's pretty much it. Now we just have to connect power with the battery. Or the battery under the hood, you can see he did a nice job. So he's got the AGU fuse holders 40 amp because the amp runs on 30. We've got a nice kicker eight gauge running through here. Boom, right through the factory grommet. Once we get power, we can cut the key on. And then you hear the boom, boom. Well, he's up front goofing around. Let me show you that on this line level converter, there are adjustable gain inputs left and right. So keep that in mind when you're adjusting one of these for yourself. The ground output is for typically noise. And since these are just subs with audible distortion, I can't foresee any kind of engine wine coming out of here. But if we ever need it, we know it's there. As far as the amplifier controls and settings are concerned, let me talk to you about doing this because this is super important. You have your input for your RCA, which is self-explanatory. Output is if you're going to daisy chain the output signal from this amp to another amp. That's all you're going to use for that one. But since this is one of those El Cheapo installations, that's not going to apply. Now, gain is going to be the amount of effective volume you're going to get out of this set setup. Bass boost, which is pretty much just a cheap way to get kind of like more distortion out of here. I'm going to kind of like not emphasize using that too much, especially on a cheap low-end amplifier like this one. LPF, what's going on with LPF? It stands for low pass filter. So essentially, 40 hertz is the lowest that this amplifier can run out. The highest it can in, in low pass filter mode is 250. Now, if you notice, this sub box here has ports in it. So this box is essentially tuned at a particular frequency. And that's going to determine what this box is going to do. I don't even know what the hell this box is tuned to, but when we do turn it on, essentially, initially we're going to set it to 250 hertz high the highest point and turn it down until there's no diff difference in audio sound so that way we want to get the most highest frequency the box is tuned for its capabilities but we, want, we don't want to go below that and then cut it off and give it too little if that makes sense hopefully that'll show up when we do the installation and test as far as settings go for you have low low pass filter which is what we're going to be using in this application for a sub Full range, we're not using in high pass filter. That's for higher and smaller speakers, mid ranges, mid bases, components, stuff like that. We're not using high pass filter. And then of course the LED, which is gonna tell us if it's in power protection. Hopefully we won't see that protect light going on. But if it's there, that'll be a problem. We don't want that today. So there's the amp, not mounted, but done and tuned up. Basically this box sounds good at like literally 40 Hertz, which is unfortunate because you can get a lot more out of this amp, I think. If you had a box that was either sealed or vented at an 80 hertz or 100, 100 hertz, I think it would probably sound a lot better. But man, 50 bucks, that first amp, amp install, this thing's working just fine. I think you'll love it. It's better than my first setup, I know that.